Good evening, parents, and thank you for joining us for this important webinar. My name is Michelle Mordica, and I am a Community Liaison Specialist with the School District's Parent Academy. I will be your moderator tonight. As we prepare to resume schooling next Monday, we know that many of you still have lingering questions about what you and your children can expect, particularly when it comes to remote learning via My School Online. It is our hope to address many of the questions we received from you via email, and we trust that this evening's presentation will provide other important information regarding our reopening of schools and the 2020-2021 school year. Before we start this evening's webinar, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce our host, Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Alberto Cavallo, to share some opening remarks. Mr. Cavallo? Thank you very much. I'm happy to join you this evening for what I consider to be one of the most important conversations that our school system can have given the unprecedented crisis we're all navigating as a result of COVID-19, a conversation with our parents and with our families about what our plans are and what you and your children can expect and how we will continue supporting their success. The past several months have presented several significant challenges, literally disrupting many of our daily routines in nearly every facet of our lives. Simple pleasures like hugging a relative, going for a run, or enjoying a meal at a favorite restaurant all look and feel different. Things are different, and they are difficult. We as a system recognize the anxiety and stress our students and you, their parents and families, are feeling. The school board and administration recognized it months ago when we first closed schools, and we recognize that those feelings are only compounded by the continued uncertainty of what will happen, how the virus will evolve, and how long before things get back to normal. I must say that while these have certainly been challenging times for us all, there is a sense of solidarity, a sense of community resulting from this unprecedented crisis. We see people being more mindful of their own behavior, appreciating those things they may have taken for granted before, lending one another a helping hand albeit from a distance. And it is this sense of solidarity, this sense of community, the resilience that our children and families continue to demonstrate, the commitment of our systems, teachers, and support staff that will see us through and allow us to emerge from this stronger than ever. My staff and I miss the students, and we know the teachers and school staff do as well. We join you in your desire to help create a sense of normalcy for them in the schoolhouse once local conditions permit. It is my hope that our time spent together this evening provides you with the information and tools you need to help your children continue navigating these uncharted waters and ultimately rise above the circumstances and thrive. Your school board and district leadership, teacher support personnel, all of us are here to help ensure that they succeed. Before you are the five principles guiding our school system's ongoing efforts to reopen smart and return safe. Our first priority has been, and will continue to be, the safety and wellness of our stakeholders. It is our mission to deliver high-quality instruction to the students whose education is entrusted to us, regardless of the instructional delivery model. And because we listen to our community, providing families with flexibility and choice in those models is very important to us. We remain committed to optimizing our use of resources, whether human capital, financial, or our physical infrastructure as we return to schooling. Finally, we understand the importance of ensuring all of our stakeholders are empowered with the most accurate and timely information about our response to COVID-19 and what parents can expect from both the central office and their child's school particularly as we prepare to resume schooling next week. Before you are the topics that will be covered this evening. First, you will learn a bit more about Miami-Dade County Public Schools' data-driven approach to reopening and the three stages that we have developed. Next, 
you'll receive more information on what the student experience will look like in stage one, as well as how we are delivering our high quality student programs this year. While we will start the 2021 school year via My School Online, many of our parents indicated a preference for their child to return to the schoolhouse when local conditions permit. We will share with you some important information on what students whose families opted to have them physically return to school in stage two can expect to see during that stage of reopening. Given the ever evolving nature of COVID-19, it is important to stay connected and informed of everything that is happening with MDCPS and your child's school. We will share specific information with you on how you can ensure you are ready for a successful 2021 school year. And we will provide you with tips for making sure you receive the most up-to-date information from us. As mentioned earlier, we at Miami-Dade County Public Schools want to welcome children back in the classroom. And we recognize that face-to-face -face is the most optimal environment for learning. However, the conditions in our community do not allow for that right now. We remain committed to protecting the health of our children, employees, and their families during the COVID-19 pandemic. And our community can rest assured that this is at the forefront of our approach to reopening. Miami-Dade is fortunate enough to have several institutions of higher education with renowned medical and public health programs and a fairly large healthcare industry. Our school system was able to tap into that to work with several medical doctors, pediatricians, and public health experts as we were developing our plans for reopening schools. This group of professionals helped us review federal, state, and local guidance on how to proceed with reopening to ensure that we were able to keep our students and employees safe. Through their expertise and in partnership with Miami-Dade County, a set of gating criteria was developed that will help us determine when it is most appropriate to reopen schools and have students return. The criteria, many of which Miami-Dade County reports on daily, includes a sustained positivity rate of less than 10%, trending toward 5% for 14 days, with a goal of 3%, a steady reduction in the number of those hospitalized for COVID-19 or flu-like symptoms for 14 days, a sustained reduction in ICU bed occupancy due to COVID-19 for 14 days, a continuous reduced community viral burden, that's a total number of virus positive individuals for 14 days. These first four are really the ones that we are keeping a very close eye on and are ultimately impacted by the final four on the right. This last one is one that we really want to ask the community support on, especially when it comes to making sure children are getting flu shots this year. The grading criteria will be used to inform transitions between instructional models throughout the three stages. Stage one, which is where we will start school next week, includes the activation of My School Online for all students. My School Online is a platform that will allow teachers to provide instruction and interact with students on a daily basis. We will talk more about the student experience in subsequent slides. Throughout this stage, we will continue to review opportunities to, in a very controlled and cautious manner, begin providing face-to-face -face opportunities for students who may have significant learning needs. We will explore the potential for a staggered reopening for our students with disabilities and our very young learners, our pre-kindergartners, our kindergartners, those students who rely on an adult to guide them in the remote learning environment. In stage two, we will activate both MSO and the five-day schoolhouse models at the same time. Students will be able to participate in the instructional model that was selected by their families via survey in July. In stage three, all students are able to return to the schoolhouse and MSO will become a choice option for those families who prefer to have their children remain in that model for the remainder of the school year. 
As we prepare to resume schooling in stage one, I would like to draw your attention to the first two calendar entries before you and remind you of some important dates in the coming weeks. To provide families with a sense of stability, routine, and as much of a normal set of conditions for teaching and learning as we can, we will be using this week to lay the groundwork for a successful school year. Yesterday, we launched the Week of Welcome for our students and families to acquaint themselves with the tools they will need to engage in learning through My School Online. More information on how to participate in the Week of Welcome and how families can access other important information will be discussed later in this webinar. As a reminder, schooling will begin Monday, August 31st, via My School Online for students across Miami-Dade. Thank you, Mr. Cavallo. We at MDCPS are committed to delivering a world-class education to all of our students, regardless of geography. Whether in My School Online or in the schoolhouse, providing students with the ability to be engaged and motivated while video conferencing with their teachers and peers, completing independent and group assignments, taking part in core and elective classes delivered with the use of high quality digital resources, and of course, making time for lunch, recess, and brain breaks throughout the day. During this portion of today's webinar, we'd like to give you a better understanding of what the student experience will look and feel like this year. In the spring, with little to no lead time, the district launched its Instructional Continuity Plan, or ICP, in order to provide students with a degree of continuity in their learning. When conditions worsened and returning to school seemed less likely, the district launched a 2.0 version of this plan. Although our plan was touted nationally, and it was the best in its class considering the conditions in which it was launched, we recognized that it was a temporary fix and we needed a long-term solution if we had to return to school in the fall virtually. Parent and student feedback on ICP 2.0 indicated a sense of frustration in terms of having to navigate multiple platforms, inconsistent class schedules, and meeting times with teachers and overall lack of consistency across schools and courses. Over the past couple of months, the district has been researching the best in-class content providers and platforms that can deliver students, families, and teachers with the one-stop shop for distance learning. In our research, we looked at state-approved content providers, and it quickly became apparent that K-12 would be the best fit given the fact that we have over 1,200 courses offered in MDCPS, and K-12 provided many of those courses. Additionally, K-12 has over 50 Florida customers, including Palm Beach, Orange, Duval, and Collier. This slide highlights some of the most important differences between ICP 2.0 and what will be offered through My School Online using K-12. K-12 is the backbone for MDCPS My School Online. On August 31st, MDCPS will reopen school albeit virtually for now, via My School Online. This slide includes the start and end times for schools this year. You will note that elementary and middle schools will have the same start and end times in both stages one and two. In an effort to be more flexible with our high school students and let them sleep in a little longer, and since bus transportation routes are not a play, at, are not a play in stage one, their start time will be at 8.30 a.m. instead of 7.20 a.m. for the duration of stage one. Once we reopen our schoolhouses, however, all high school students will go back to starting their day at 7.20 a.m. Attendance will be taken by teachers as soon as that morning bell rings and in middle and high schools at the start of each class period. Daily school attendance will be taken every scheduled school day during the student's first class of the day. Students will be counted in attendance to class if they log into the live sessions with their teachers. 
students must enable the camera function on their computers so that the teacher can identify them and take attendance, as well as conduct wellness checks of their pupils regularly. Details on attendance, procedures, and appeal processes for student absences can be found in the District Reopening Guide found at reopening.dadeschools.net. The most critical element of preparation to successfully engage in my school online on August 31st is to ensure students have a mobile device and internet connectivity. Following school closures in the spring, we were able to hand devices to students to help them engage in distance learning. In the spring, we had a 99% connectivity rate. 119K devices were distributed, including 11K Wi-Fi hotspots. Returning students were allowed to keep those devices for use during 2020-2021. To prepare for the 2020-2021 school year, we have ordered 25K new devices to ensure that the sharing of a device with a parent or sibling is not a barrier to students participating in live instruction. We have also provided over 7,000 hotspots to families who lack internet access and have ordered 3,400 additional hotspots for the fall. If your child needs a device or you lack internet connectivity at home or where your child will be accessing MSO starting August 31st, please contact your child's school. Finally, if you do have a district-owned device at home, make sure it is working properly before the first day of school. To do this, power the device on, make sure the device is fully charged, and have your child log into the device and access the student portal. If you have issues logging into the device, contact your child's school for support. Once you have internet and a dedicated mobile device with a microphone and camera, your child is ready to start My School Online. All they will need to do is to access the MSO tile found on their student portal. To do this, students will go to www.dateschools.net and click on the Student tab. Then they will click on the Login to Student Portal link. When prompted, students will enter their username and password and click Login. Finally, Students will click on the My School Online tile to launch the application. Please remember that we use the portal to notify parents and students of important information, such as students' class schedule and grades. So now, more than ever, it is vital for parents and students to have access to the dadeschools.net portal and to visit it frequently. Additionally, students in grades six and up are encouraged to use their district issued email address and check it regularly to access important notices from the district, the principal, and teachers. Parents are recommended to download the MDCPS mobile app. Your child's school can provide you with information on how to do this, as well as your six digit parent PIN number. Information on how to perform these actions is part of the Week of Welcome programming, which will be discussed later on in tonight's webinar. So what will the interface look like for my child on My School Online? Let's take a look. Are you ready for school this fall? We're ready. My School Online, powered by K-12, is made for online learning. And since we know things look a lot different this school year, we want to give families a clear picture of how school at home can look. When students log in, they gain access to a whole world of learning. Many of your students' educational materials are digital files in your students' courses, so they're at your fingertips whenever you need them. The curriculum moves with them. Daily plans, class schedules, lessons, and an entire school community are just a click away. For young learners, lessons come to life as the interactive online curriculum engages them, motivates them to keep going, and celebrates their successes. A variety of learning tools supplement their lessons and keep kids active in their education. As students advance in grade level, new curriculum continues to engage and challenge, encouraging students to dive deeper 
discover their passions, and take charge of their education. Our students spend time in live class sessions each day. They learn to manage their time, communicate effectively, and work collaboratively, setting them up for a successful future. Teachers love the online classroom environment because it's designed to support multiple teaching methods. An integrated classroom and whiteboard provide powerful teaching tools in a secure online environment. Although online learning might feel new, when you log into My School Online, powered by K-12, you'll know we've got the right tools to make school at home work for you. Developed by teachers, scientists, technologists, designers, writers, and researchers, all with the needs of children in mind, you'll know that when it comes to online learning, we've got this. We're here for your success. Together, we can make it happen. My School Online, powered by K-12. Just like in the traditional schoolhouse, establishing and following routines will help set students up for success in My School Online. One of the main ways we are able to build school culture and promote a sense of belonging and school spirit among students in the traditional schoolhouse setting is through the use of school uniforms. As a result, students will be encouraged to wear their school uniforms to participate in My School Online each day. Families experiencing financial hardship or who may otherwise have difficulty in acquiring a school uniform for their children may contact their child's school and learn more about the School Uniform Assistance Program. As mentioned earlier in this evening's webinar, attendance taking is a procedure that is built into the My School Online experience. Official school attendance for the day will be taken during a student's first class, and class attendance will be captured during live sessions with teachers for each class at the secondary level or whenever students change teachers at the elementary level. As part of established district policy, absences shall be reported to the student's enrolled school by the parent, legal guardian, no later than five days from the date of the absence. Failure to provide the required documentation within five school days upon return to schooling will result in an unexcused absence. More information on student attendance procedures is available on our reopening guide. One question parents have asked has to do with students enabling of the camera or video function while engaging in My School Online. To verify that students are indeed present, they must enable the camera and function for their teacher to take attendance. Beyond capturing attendance, students enabling of their cameras affords teachers a valuable opportunity to perform an overall wellness check on their students something that during these unprecedented times has, can help teachers assess students' physical and social-emotional well-being. Parents, families with extenuating circumstances inhibiting this functionality may contact their child's school and speak to an administrator. While students will be learning through My School Online, they will still have access to healthy meals during the school day. During Stage 1, we will distribute meals at school sites after the close, after the school day ends. This allows students and families to pick up multiple meals at once without interruption to students' valuable learning time. Meals will be available for pickup on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 4 to 6 p.m. Student identification must be provided by the student, parent, or guardian to pick up the meals. Parents with students at multiple school sites will be able to collect all meals at one time and at one location. They must simply provide student identification for each child. Parents with children at district-wide magnet schools or choice programs will also have the opportunity to pick up student meals at their neighborhood schools. We will be using cashless online payment via PayPams, our parent account management system for meal distribution at all schools. As we continue to balance safety and a full student experience, students will engage in extracurricular clubs and activities through a virtual setting while facilities are closed. In-person field trips will also be on hold during stage one. 
Through Stage 1, school sites will also host events such as open house and students' assemblies virtually. The Division of Athletics, Activities, and Accreditation and the Executive Committee of the Greater Miami Athletic Conference, GMAC, have developed a phased plan for returning to play. This balanced approach emphasizes the safety of our student athletes and coaches while incorporating conditioning and health checks. Parents should contact the athletic or activities director at their child's school to obtain additional information on specific activities. MDCPS offers a world-class education to its students. Our academic programs are very broad, ranging from IB to career and technical programs and service to students with a wide spectrum of disabilities, students in college prep programs, and students that are English language learners. Whether we are in the schoolhouse or learning from a distance, our mission does not waver, ensuring that we are giving all students the world. Let's take a look at some of the supports in place in these academic programs and what parents and students can expect. During distance learning, pre-K students' instruction will be delivered both offline and online to ensure that students are provided experiences that are engaging and developmentally appropriate. On this side, you see the fundamental building blocks in this comprehensive model that will include teacher-led instruction, individualized online learning, teacher monitoring of students' progress, active learning of children at home, and family engagement. A typical day during pre-K My School Online will include a balanced combination of teacher-led online instruction, individualized online learning, and independent active play. This schedule will have developmentally appropriate time segments for young learners. Pre-K's blended instructional model takes advantage of the technological benefits of the K-12 platform while supplementing with digital learning for both students and families. Teachers will connect with their students through live lessons using the K-12 platform. Another program, Waterford, which is an adaptive online program, will provide students with individualized activities across all areas of learning. We will also utilize Ready Rosie, which is a simple, easy to use tool that provides families with short videos right to their mobile device on how to support their child's learning at home. Our youngest learners will have a balanced and an engaging online learning experience through the blended instructional model. The next set of slides considers the needs of students who participate in advanced academic programming such as gifted, AP, IB, Cambridge, and dual enrollment. Advanced academic programs will, will be available to students in both the face-to-face -face schoolhouse model and in My School Online MSO. Students in the gifted program will continue to receive their services and instruction based on their educational plan. The K-12 platform provides additional features and curriculum resources that allow for acceleration and enrichment through the core content areas. Students enrolled in Advanced Placement, IB or Cambridge, will continue to participate in these programs during the new school year. While we were in Stage 1, while we are in Stage 1, Students in these courses will receive remote instruction from their teachers following their bell schedule. This instruction and curriculum will be available to students through Microsoft Teams. The courses can be delivered virtually or face-to-face -face for students who transition to their school sites during Stage 2. Some of our students take dual enrollment courses at the college or university level. Those students who are enrolled in a dual enrollment course on the high school campus will receive remote instruction from their dual enrollment teacher following the standard school schedule. The dual enrollment teachers will use the digital platform and course content provided by the college or university offering the course. For example, Florida International University uses Canvas and its as its platform 
while Miami-Dade College uses Blackboard Learn. Regardless of the platform, the curricula can be delivered virtually or face-to-face -face for students who transition to school sites during Stage 2. Students who participate in dual enrollment on the college-university campus will follow the schedule and guidelines provided by the institution. Students with disabilities will continue to receive high-quality education and services during Stage 1 and beyond. Students who are on a standard curriculum will access My School Online and will follow the regular curriculum offered in this, in this platform. Students on a modified curriculum will access supplementary programs and resources that we have purchased and will receive instruction using access points and learning maps specifically designed for these students. In addition, support services will continue to be provided virtually, such as paraprofessionals and sign language interpreters. Finally, through telehealth, we will be providing related services. It's important for parents to know that individual educational plan, IEP meetings, and psychological evaluations take place virtually through telehealth platforms and in person whenever practicable. In addition, we have created a distance learning implementation plan, DLIP, for ESC students to detail how each student's IEP will be delivered in My School Online. A new DLIP for 2020-2021 will be completed for each student with an IEP. Even though supports and services such as speech language therapy, occupational and physical therapy, counseling, sign language interpretation, and services for the visually impaired were provided during the school closures, and over 96% of the eligible students receive the services delineated in their IEPs, as we begin the 2020-2021 school year, we will assess each student's progress through our newly developed Learning Loss Index for Students with Disabilities. This tool will help capture multiple progress indicators to assist schools in determining if additional supports and services will be needed to help mitigate the impact of any potential learning loss during school closures and summer months. 18% of our student body are students who are limited English proficient. To support our English language learners, we have developed a comprehensive plan for addressing language acquisition, learning gaps, and unfinished learning. English language learners will be enrolled in ESOL appropriate courses to support learning the English language. The ESOL teachers will provide instruction remotely during stage one of reopening and students will follow their standard bell schedule so they can connect with their teachers daily. Once we move to stage two, all teachers of ESOL students will provide instruction in both the remote environment and in the schoolhouse. The curriculum platform we are using will provide ESOL students with support and translations so they are able to access the core content. We have discussed quite a bit about how we will be implementing student programs regardless of whether students participate online or on campus. I would like to draw your attention to the last calendar entry on this slide. Between the first day of school and the end of September, the district will continue to closely monitor local data on the eight gating criteria we mentioned at the beginning of this presentation. Based on that information, a decision will be made no later than the end of September about whether or not the school district is able to transition to stage two of reopening on October 5th. A decision regarding reopening of schools could be considered earlier if we continue to see significant improvements in community health conditions based on the gating criteria. In stage two, those students whose families opted for an in-person return to the schoolhouse will begin physically reporting to their schools, while those students whose families selected the My School online option 
will continue using MSO. In the unlikely event that local conditions do not permit a transition to stage two of reopening by October 5th, all students will continue with My School Online until a future reassessment is conducted. Because we are sensitive to the needs of our parents and your strong desire to plan for your families with a high level of certainty, the dates for that reassessment of conditions and associated announcements will be communicated once a decision is made regarding the transition to stage two for October 5th. We know many of you, like us, are eager to have students return to the sense of normalcy and routine that more traditional schoolhouse setting provides. While our students engage in learning via My School Online through the end of September, we at Miami-Dade County Public Schools will continue preparing our facilities to welcome students back during Stage 2. But before we tell you all that we are doing, let's go ahead and show you some of what we've been up to in terms of ensuring our campuses are ready and a few of the protocols students and families can expect to see in place during Stage 2. To ensure the safety of our students and employees, we are requiring face covering while riding the school bus. We're limiting capacity and placing hand sanitizer stations at the entry of school buses. In addition, all school buses will be sanitized daily between morning and afternoon routes. We want all students to have access to healthy meals. So we are making sure we take the precautions to ensure that, making sure that the food service staff actually has the PPE that they need, such as the gloves, masks, as well as goggles. And we will also be serving all students in single use containers, as well as making sure that they are consuming their meals in a social distancing environment. To ensure a safe and welcoming learning environment, the district will implement a series of measures and protocols to ensure our students and staff remain healthy while in Stage 2. Among these measures are 
the installation of consistent signage and posters throughout and across school campuses to reinforce social distancing and good hygiene among our students and staff, maximizing social distancing in the classroom by removing non-essential furniture, installing hand sanitizing stations in high traffic areas in schools and on school buses, as you saw in the video, providing each school with advanced cleaning equipment so that they may efficiently sanitize the building every day. Miami-Dade County Public Schools has made a significant investment to increase existing inventories of sanitizing supplies and purchase for more personal protective equipment, signage, and thermometers to keep our campuses clean and ensure compliance with our new protocols. Additionally, over 2,000 of our custodial personnel have been trained on enhanced cleaning protocols and guidelines as part of our overall response and preparedness for COVID-19. Students planning on returning to the schoolhouse during stage two can expect to see and follow a series of campus protocols to help protect their safety and that of others. We need parents to assist us in making sure children follow these protocols for their safety, especially with the first item before you. Parents should perform a health screening on their children prior to sending them to school on the bus or dropping them off at the schoolhouse. This includes checking their temperature and other symptoms. To assist you in performing these health screenings, we are working with the county to provide one no-contact thermometer per family, prioritizing those children whose families have indicated they will return to, to the schoolhouse in Stage 2. These thermometers and additional information will be provided by your child's school. We also need parents to ensure they send children to school with a face covering. School restrooms and elevators will have a capacity limit of two people at a time, and we will implement directional hallways and stairways when possible. We ask our students to follow the guidance provided on the signage throughout the schools. If a student leaves the classroom, they will need to wash their hands or use hand sanitizer before re-entering the room. The campus will be fully cleaned at the end of each day with the exception of bathrooms, which will be cleaned frequently throughout the day. All visitors, including parents, will need to make an appointment and wear a face covering while on campus. One thing that our parents and families can be confident about is that we as a system are prepared to respond in the event of a child at one of our schools exhibiting COVID-19 symptoms or being confirmed positive. In addition to ensuring all schools have nursing services, the district, per the guidance from the CDC and FDOE, have developed response plans for multiple scenarios. Our incoming chief health officer and district operations will work hand in hand to ensure a rapid response to ensure the safety of the school community. If a student is showing symptoms, the following steps will be taken. Step one, the student will be moved to the pre-designated isolation room. If needed, the parent guardian will be contacted to immediately pick the student up from school. Before that determination is made, the student will be asked a series of health screening questions, a physical screening, including a temperature check, will be performed. The student will be allowed to rest for 10 minutes to see if symptoms improve. If symptoms do not change, the parent guardian will be contacted to pick the child up. If the child is picked up, the school will notify our Chief Health Officer School Operations Chief Health Officer will advise school on sanitation procedures. School operations will monitor the situation. If a student is confirmed positive, the school site administrator will immediately initiate investigation, contact tracing, tracing with oversight and direction from the district. The investigation contact tracing will include the identification of staff and students that had direct contact with the student, 
the identification of areas of the building the student traveled, the identification of students' siblings, and where they attend school. This may also include parents who are employees at another school or location within MDCPS. The identification of employees who had contact with the student. Results of the contact tracing investigation will be reported to School Operations Chief Health Officer. School Operations Chief Health Officer will create recommendation for school closure if needed. For example, how many days and deep cleaning procedures. At every step of the contract tracing process, the, di the district will collaborate with the Florida Department of Health and the school site administrator will follow guidance from the health department regarding school and community notification. Once the district progresses to stage two, students who are attending in person will eat their meals in the cafeteria, classroom, or another designated area based on the school site's ability to implement social distancing while students attending my school online will be able to pick up multiple meals at distributions throughout the week. School sites will select a meal service option that allows for the ability to implement social distancing during meal service. Student identification badges will now be scanned for meal accountability, eliminating the use of keypads. During stage two, students will continue to engage in extracurricular clubs and activities in a virtual setting. In-person field trips will also be on hold. Select events may take place in person, but must follow current CDC, Department of Health, and school board policies, including group, side limits, group size limitations, social distancing, and the use of facial coverings. The phased approach for return to play developed by the Division of Athletics, Activities, and Accreditation, and the GMAC Executive Committee will provide more access to athletic activities. Parents with questions regarding specific activities should contact the athletic or activities director at their child's school. As we prepare to start school next week and plan for an eventual return to the schoolhouse, we want to remind you that you are our valuable partners in your child's education. For this portion of the webinar, we will discuss a number of things that parents and families can do to help get ready for back to school next week. As in, as in years past, the district has prepared a comprehensive back to school checklist that lists the various actions parents are to take in preparation for the school year. The checklist also provides important information regarding how to ensure we have your most updated contact information. The Dade Schools mobile app required immunizations for attending school, online access, school supplies, meals, and useful numbers hotlines. If you have not already done so, please review this important document, which may be found at reopening.dadeschools.net. Given the current local conditions, schools across our district have implemented quick drive-through orientations for students entering kindergarten or that are new to the district. These drive-through orientations commenced last week and provide the family of our kindergartners and children new to Miami-Dade County Public Schools with important information related to free and reduced price lunch applications, creating a parent portal account, obtaining a parent personal identification number, parent PIN, to access the portal, as well as individualized school site information. Contact your child's school for more information on these orientation materials. Back to school time is the perfect time for parents and families to visit our Parent Academy's virtual campus and familiarize themselves with the many resources available. The virtual campus may be accessed via the Parent Academy website at parentacademymiami.com. We recommend that you bookmark this website and visit it frequently as we are constantly adding content for parents. We also encourage you to participate in the virtual open house hosted by your child's school. This will provide an excellent opportunity 
for you to connect with your child's teachers, learn more about school-specific procedures, and further engage with the school community. Additional information on virtual open house and how you can participate will be provided by your child's school. During Week of Welcome, a set of modules goes live every day and will be available on demand after. They range in length from three minutes to about 80 minutes and are geared to students and parents and in many cases could be viewed jointly every day. The modules are organized into four categories, each with specific must-watch videos resources. For example, in connecting virtually, parents and students will learn about navigating their respective portals, online safety, and how to access My School Online. Must-watch topics in supporting student success include a day in the life of MSO students, student attendance procedures, and communicating effectively with your child's school. Healthy Mind and Body modules will include the topics related to mindfulness and mental health. Must-watch modules for your child on campus will discuss COVID-19 and symptoms of communicable diseases, as well as how to perform a health screening for your child. Now let's take a look at what a week of welcome will offer parents and students. Are you worried about starting My School Online August 31st? Don't worry. Watch this. Just follow these three easy steps. Step 1. Visit Miami Week of Welcome. Step 2. Choose your topic of interest. Step 3. Watch videos every day starting Monday, August 24th. Expect to watch informative videos. Be sure to watch essential ones first. Expect to be ready for My School Online on August 31st. Don't miss it. Get your child ready. Go visit MiamiWeekOfWelcome.com. Now that you know where to go, what can you expect to see when you actually get to MiamiWeekOfWelcome.com? Before, before you are some examples of the must-watch modules for parents and families. As mentioned earlier, our modules are available in three different languages, and each module is labeled as must-watch or useful information so that students, parents, and families know which information is the most important for them to watch. Additionally, we flag, we flag the intended audience for each module, whether students, parents, or families together, so you know exactly how to tune in. A critical component of all we do as a school system involves communicating on an ongoing basis with our many stakeholders. As we prepare to welcome students back for the 2020-2021 academic year, it is important that we continue to share information with parents and families in various ways. Our main priority is to ensure student success. Therefore, it is vital for families to be informed and remain connected. Through our many resources and media partners, we are able to share important updates with parents. Families have the option to receive information from the school system in their preferred language, either English, Spanish, or Haitian Creole. Select your preferred language through your child's school to receive automated text, voice, and email messages. Each month, a district-wide digital newsletter for parents called Connection is distributed to schools, shared via social media, and posted online at EngageMiamiDade.net. This newsletter contains helpful information such as upcoming important dates, parent e-tips, and other resources. Make sure that you have provided your email address to your child's school so that you can receive the newsletter during the school year. 
Each day, Miami-Dade County Public Schools shares information via our social media platform to ensure that families are prepared for the transition back to school. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for the latest updates. Through our ongoing media outreach efforts, the school district is able to share critical updates in publications such as Community Newspapers, Patch.com, El Nuevo Herald, Diario Las Americas, and Libre. Information is also shared via radio programs in multiple language, languages, including MDCPS Voices, Broadcasting Weekly on WMBM, Radio La Cool on WLRN, Radio 91.3, Radio RCH on 1610 AM, and Niche Radio on 1580 AM, as well as regular guest appearances on English and Spanish radio stations. Be sure to visit our dedicated website, reopening.dadeschools.net, for the latest updates about the upcoming school year. Being able to reach you by phone, email, and text is extremely important, especially in light of our current environment. We want to ensure that you receive timely information from your child's school and the district. That is why we must have updated phone numbers and email addresses. It's also important to update emergency contact numbers, including grandparents and other family members if they are listed at the school site as a contact. If you are receiving calls in one language but prefer a different language, you must let the school know. For example, if you're getting calls in English but you want them in Spanish, call your child's school as this can only be updated by the school. If you are not currently receiving text messages, be sure to text Y to 67587 from your cell phone to opt in. As a reminder, this will only work if we have an updated phone number. Please reach out to your child's principal to update your contact information. The Day Schools mobile app is another available resource to staying connected. It is a one-stop shop for parents to receive valuable information such as class schedules, student grades, and much more. You can download the Day Schools mobile app for your Apple or Android device through the Apple Store or Google Play Store. Search for Dade Schools Mobile, click on the icon, and download it to your device. Once you download the app, open it and log in using your parent ID and password. After you log in, click on the various icons to access the resources within the Dade Schools Mobile app. Make sure you are following our social media accounts as the school district posts regular updates on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. These posts may answer many of your questions. If you still need assistance, contact one of our dedicated hotlines. For general inquiries, please call our district emergency operations hotline. For questions regarding online learning, contact our distance learning hotline. Questions about adult and career education programs can be directed to their dedicated hotline. The mental and emotional well-being of students and families is critical during these times of uncertainty. The Department of Mental Health Services remains ready to assist anyone who may feel overwhelmed or unable to cope with their emotions through their hotline. Help is available in English, Spanish, and Haitian Creole. Finally, Project Upstart provides assistance to students and families living in transition. We know we have shared a great deal of information with you this evening. However, we know that there may still be some things that remained unanswered so far. At this point, we will review some of the questions that parents and families across our community sent us in the 10 days or so leading up to tonight's webinar. Note that we will try to answer as many questions as possible within the time allotted. For those of you who submitted questions we are unable to answer due to time constraints, 
we, you will receive a response from your child's school administrator or a representative from the region or district. You may also continue checking our Frequently Asked Questions page on reopening.dadeschools.net as those are being updated on a regular basis. Tonight's first question, when will I see my child's schedule? That's actually a really good question for students and families to build their routines. Student schedules were made available on the portal and Date Schools mobile app this past Saturday, August 22nd. Will there be open houses? If so, when? And will they be virtual? Yes, we love open houses. Our schools will host open houses this year, and yes, they too will be virtual. Open houses will take place beginning the second week of school, with elementary and K-8 open houses occurring on Wednesday, September 9th, middle school open houses on Thursday, September 10th, and senior high school open houses on Tuesday, September 15th. Specific information on how you can participate in these virtual open houses with your children will be provided by the individual school. In July, the model I selected for stage two was the schoolhouse option. When we actually move to stage two, may I opt to keep in MSO despite the preference I submitted in July? Can parents change their choice? This is actually one of the most frequently asked questions. Uh, moves from the schoolhouse model to MSO are simpler because they do not impact our ability to implement the recommended health protocols from the CDC. These obviously include social distancing and monitoring schoolhouse capacity thresholds. However, changes from MSO to the schoolhouse are a bit more complex. In this scenario, schools will make every effort to accommodate the request and the decision will ultimately be guided by individual school building capacity, transportation, and scheduling. Transfers between models will be considered by schools at the end of the first grading period. How can I communicate with my child's teacher? You know, communication is extremely important. That's why all MDCPS teachers have district-issued email addresses and parents may access these email addresses in a variety of ways. One way is by accessing the website of your child's school. Many schools provide a staff directory that lists teacher email addresses. Parents can always contact the child's school to leave a message for the teacher and initiate communication that way. Email addresses for teachers can be found in the portal where a child's class schedule is located, and parents will be able to send emails to the child's teacher via the Date Schools mobile app, as well as the MSO platform when school starts. Additionally, parents can expect teachers to share their contact information and preferred methods for communication during open house. One of the things I'm concerned about with my school online is screen time, especially for younger learners. What are the screen time expectations for students? This is a very important question. So screen time expectations for students will vary depending on what is being taught and the learning activities students are assigned to as in a traditional setting. Teachers are expected to provide live instruction for at least 50% of the typical class session. The remaining class time will involve independent work that can be done either offline or online, depending on the task, or small group instruction with the teacher. With teaching and learning happening on my school online at the beginning of the school year, what should I get for my child in terms of school supplies? Even though we will be using a digital platform for my school online, students will still need typical school supplies, such as paper and pencils to take notes, solve math problems during stage one, as well as any other supplies that they may need based on teacher recommendations. Students will also need a computer with a camera, microphone, and internet access. Some students may prefer to have headphones to help them focus, particularly if there are siblings or family members also working online nearby. 
Our very last question this evening is what accommodations are being made for working families? So during stage one, uh, we've been hard at work at creating partnerships with community organizations. We recognize that this is a really big concern for a lot of working families, and the supervision of their children is one of our highest priorities. We will be publishing a list of participating community organizations who are ready, uh, willing, and able to supervise and monitor children uh, during this first stage of uh, teaching and learning. As we close out for this evening, on behalf of our school board and employees, thank you for joining us for this important webinar. It is our hope that we answered many of your questions. With the first day of schooling less than a week away, we encourage you to stay connected and remain informed. Please continue visiting our reopening website at reopening.dadeschools.net, review our reopening guide, Make sure we have your correct contact information on file and follow us on social media. If you have additional questions, remember that the administration at your child's school is one of your first lifelines in learning what to expect in the 2020-2021 school year. You can also contact one of our support lines for more specific information. Thank you for entrusting Miami-Dade County Public Schools with your child's education and for your continued partnership. Together, we stand ready to reopen smart and return safe.